Hello students and welcome to the final lesson of module three. In this module, we've been covering lots of different differentiation rules, the power rule, the product, the quotient, the chain rule, right? Really major things within calculus, things that you're gonna wanna know. And so today we're gonna cover the final rule that you're gonna really want to get down, which is going to be the derivatives of inverse functions. Let's get started. So I just wanted to do a recap really of just earlier courses. What is an inverse function? And so if you have f of x and you want to know what is the inverse function, the inverse of f of x, then what do we really think about in our heads? Okay. So the inverse of f of x is the function whose domain is the original range of f of x and whose range is the original domain of f of x. So really what you're doing is you're just swapping the domain and range of f of x and that's what gets you the inverse of f of x. So I want to take a look here at a couple things that um, I really I really noticed as we're doing this. So I'm going to make a graph real quick and um, I'm going to put some points in. So here I'm going to put f of x and the first point I'm going to put in is right here. I'm going to name this negative one comma one. Okay. And this is just going to be like a quick sketch. So negative one, one right there. And then I'm going to go negative four, two. So I'll, I'll name this one negative four, two right there. And then I'm going to go negative five and five, something like that. So that I'll name is negative five comma five. All right. And I'm going to connect these points. All right. And that's going to get me um, that's going to get me F. Okay. And really what I'm looking at is right here, the inverse is I'm just going to swap the domain and range. I'm going to swap the X and the Y right there. So this point says negative one, one. So now it's just going to say one, negative one. So one to the right and one down. So then I have negative four, two. So that's going to be two, negative four. Again, just a sketch may not be perfect, but it's going to be pretty close. And then finally, uh, negative five, five. So that's going to be five over five down. Something pretty close to that. And that right there is going to be the inverse of f of x. Okay. Now I want to just take a look here real quick and uh, notice like really what's happening is we're getting this reflection, a reflection across that dashed line. And what is the equation of that dashed line? Well, that is just going to be y equals x. So graphically, the inverse of f of x is formed by reflecting f of x over the line y equal to x. So really, it's just a reflection over that line. You just take it and you flip it down and that, that's going to be the inverse of f of x. Okay. And so now I want to say, okay, what is our analytical representation of the inverse? Like what is the meaning behind it? So if the inverse of f of x is the true inverse, so I'll just write the, is the inverse of f of x, then the following things are true. Okay. So then again, we're talking about compositions then f of the inverse of f of x is going to be equal to x. So a composition, you put one into the other and you're going to get x. And conversely, along with that, the opposite is true. The inverse of f of f of x is equal to x, okay? And so sometimes you get some weird things where uh, one of them may not come out to be x, but don't worry about that too, too much because in calculus, uh, you're, you're really not going to worry about that too, too much. But if you ever want to confirm if something is accurate, if you, uh, what you calculate to be the inverse is actually the inverse, just do a composition and, and it should work out. So here, what we're going to do is we're going to throw in some practice here. Okay. And so, um, what I want to do as I'm doing this is I, I want to complete these table of values. So if I've got X and I want the inverse right there of F, well, all I'm going to do is swap the X and F, the original X and F. So it says negative two, three. So now it's going to say three, negative two. And it says one, two. So now it's going to say two comma one. 
all right? Now I can use those values here, okay? So we wanna find the value of the inverse of f of one. Okay, so let's see what, what is f of one? Well, f of one, there's one and here's f of x, so that's gonna get me two. So I want the inverse of f of two. And if I look at this table right above it, f of two, the inverse of f of two is gonna get me one. Okay, so I'm just looking right there. All right, so now I'm gonna do the same thing with the inverse of g. And so I got negative two, one, so now it's gonna say one comma negative two, and then it says one negative two, so now I'm gonna get negative two comma one. Okay, just flip flopping those x and g of x values. So now I wanna find the value of the inverse of g of the inverse of f of two. Well, that is a mouthful, okay? So as I'm doing this, um, I'm gonna want to use like that original uh, or the inverse of f of x here. So I want the inverse of f of two. So I'm looking right there and that's gonna get me one. So now what I'm gonna look at is the inverse of g of one. Okay, so now I look at my table above. Here's one right there. The inverse of g of one is gonna get me equal to negative two. All right, so then after that, I'm coming up here to this one right above me and we want to find the value of f of the inverse of g of negative 2. Wow. So let's figure out what that part is real quick. The inverse of g of negative 2. Um, so I'm looking right here and that's going to get me 1. So I really just want f of 1. Like that. Alright, so f of 1, that's going to be the original function. Okay, so I'm looking right here and that's going to be equal to 2. So I get 2 from that, okay? All right, and now this one is gigantic. Let me just work from the inside out. The inverse of g of one, okay? That is going to get me negative two. So I get the inverse of f of g of negative two. So now I'm looking up at that uh, table above. And so then that's gonna be, uh, the original g of negative two is gonna be one right there. So I want the inverse of one. And now I'm looking at this table and I'm looking at these X's right here. All I have is three and two. I don't have one, okay? And you don't wanna go from this that way because that's not the X value. So the inverse of F of one doesn't exist. It's not in our table. So that is actually undefined. Don't think um, necessarily that you've uh, made a mistake. Sometimes it's just not possible. There are some inverses that they they don't have the like you only have the domain and range so if it's not included then that domain and range get completely flipped okay so what i want to do kind of after that practice right that's just practice of inverses right no calculus what i want to do with that is use these ideas to find the formula for the derivative of an inverse function okay so here we go differentiate both sides of the equation below. What I want to do is I'm going to want to use that chain rule, okay? So as I'm going through here and I, I want the chain rule, I've got, I've got this uh, inner function, I've got the outer function. So I'm gonna take the derivative of the outer part. So the inverse, I'm sorry, not the inverse, the derivative of f and I'm gonna hold on to the inner part, which is just the inverse of f. And then I'm going to multiply this. I'm going to multiply this by, let me switch it up to red here. I'm going to multiply this by the derivative. And instead of just like writing negative one and then like the tick mark for prime, um, I'm going to put that outside of this bracket just to make it a little bit more clear. So I want the derivative of the inverse. So that's kind of like that little tick mark, that prime symbol is why we kind of don't use ones as exponents. All right. Now, I also want to take that derivative of the right side. So what's the derivative of x? That's gonna get me one, okay? And what I'm doing here, um, what I want you guys to notice is like that is the, the typical composition and it's going to come out to x. We, we covered that on our previous page. So I'm not just pulling this out of thin air here. All right, but I want to see, okay, what is the derivative of the inverse? I want to find that part in red right there, okay? So as I'm going through this, I want to solve for that. And basically what I'm gonna do is I'm going to divide both sides by this, okay? 
So um, if I want the derivative of the inverse of f of x, okay, I'm just going to divide by f prime of the inverse. And that's what's going to get me the derivative. That right there, this right here, is the derivative of the inverse function, okay? And so we're gonna get one example down here using that. So suppose that f of x is three x plus two, um, f prime of negative two is equal to three. What is this derivative, okay? So what I'm doing here is I'm following this rule. So the derivative of the inverse of f of negative four. Wow, what a mouthful, okay. So that's what I wanna find. So basically all the x's become four all right, or sorry, negative four in this case. And um, so I'm just gonna follow that kind of formula that I've got above. So one over the derivative of f, the inverse of f of negative four. There we go, all right. But now I, I run into this issue. What is the derivative or what is the inverse of f, okay? So we're gonna come over here, we're gonna do some work over here off to the side. So I've got, I've got this part right here. f of x is 3x plus two. So I'm just gonna write that as y equals 3x plus two. And um, what I do normally is I just swap, again, we're swapping the domain and range. So all I'm gonna do is swap the x and the y values. So x equals three y plus two. And what I wanna do is solve back for y. So x minus two equals three y. And then x minus two over three equals y. And now that's gonna be my inverse function. x minus two over three is the inverse of f, okay? And again, it's just the inverse, it's not the derivative, but I could take the derivative, but um, we're, we're not going to in this case, all right? And what I want to do is I want to find this. What do you get from this when you substitute in a negative four? So you get negative four minus two, which is negative six. Negative six divided by three is negative two. So negative two is the inverse of negative four. Okay. So now that I know the inverse of f of negative four, right? Because I've got it right there. Um, we know it comes out to be negative two. So I can continue with my problem one over f prime of negative two and f prime of negative two we've got in our prompt f prime of negative two is three so i get one third so when i'm trying to say what is the value well the value comes out to be that right there so the derivative of the inverse of f of negative four comes out to be one third and if you were to graph these things, if you were to graph the inverse, right, because we've got the function right here, if we graph the inverse and found the derivative at a point, or you just found this derivative, right, you could do that. But you're going to notice that there are a lot of questions that look like this, like this right above me. And so that's why we want to know what, what is that full thing that we're going to be using here. And so you really want to get this rule down. This is a very important rule. And it's been showing up a lot in AP calculus exams. So you're really gonna want to know how to utilize it, okay? So the derivative of the inverse, you just divide, okay? It's one over the derivative of the outer of the inverse, okay? So you want, that's how you kind of wanna keep that in mind, all right? So in our next video, this is gonna be a two-part lesson. In our next video, we're gonna do some practice problems. Then you have your homework. And then you're going to want to do those review problems so that you can prepare for that upcoming quiz and test that you guys are going to have coming up, okay? Of course, if you, if you do not remember how to do inverse functions, if you're, if you're unaware of what they mean and you need more practice on how to work with them, please just reach out to me. I'm Mr. Hernandez, and this is Mr. Hernandez Teaches.